And to what extent has Jewishness or Yiddish culture played a role in your life? Mm, I would say, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of not very much, except that I'm aware of being Jewish, that I know that I'm not um, non-Jewish. You know? Um, I know that I'm classified as white, but I'm not really white, like in a waspy sense. That there's, I think of it as white ethnic, but then there's also um, I'm aware that I'm of an Eastern European Jewish background. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm a sociolinguist, so I, I can't help but be aware that you know my speech pattern is influenced by Jewish identity, um, that my cultural outlook is influenced by it. But it's not something that I've um, really uh, pursued. You know, I mean, I I read all kinds of literature, but you know, if I'm reading Philip Roth, I'm 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 aware of you know the sort of identity issues and that you know it's it's sort of more personal. I have Jewish friends and non-Jewish friends. With Jewish friends, I I definitely notice um, uh, you know a more ironic self-regard and humor than I might have with some other friends just because we both kind of get our own um, flaws in a way. Of, you know, I mean, I think all ethnicity has, has flaws and it's easier to laugh at them when you're with other people of the same ethnic group. I guess I have a kind of negative view of ethnicity. I've gotten in trouble with that, I know, once I said to a class of students who were diverse that I really didn't like any particular ethnic group and they definitely took it the wrong way. <laughs> I just meant in isolation that, you know, there's just something about group identity which brings out positive, but also brings out sort of the worst in, in people. Um, and, you know, so I'm aware of, I think of the, I think I'm probably hyper aware of the ups and downs of being Jewish. Uh, there's a haughtiness, there's a snobbery, there's a chosenness that, you know, that I, I don't think that I grew up with that, but I'm, I'm aware of that as a pitfall. But there's also a humor, there's a pessimism, there's a neurosis, there's um, self-deprecation, um, paranoia, which is justified. Um, so all of that. And, and I don't you, like Woody Allen. <laughs> and would you say your relationship to your Jewish identity has shifted or evolved over your lifetime? I think it's been fairly stable. I think I'm probably... Um, more at peace, maybe, at this point in my life with it, as, as a fact, without really having a strong desire to pursue it. Um, I think there was probably a time when I preferred not to think about it too much, um, which I would say was probably more midlife. I think I was definitely aware of it as a teenager. I mean, in my high school, we were Jewish and non-Jewish, and it was very clear where all the divides were. and. Um, I, I ask younger people now is that if that's still a thing, you know, knowing who's Jewish and who isn't Jewish, and they've said to me, yeah, it still is, and it kind of surprises me because I think Jewish identity has really become much more religious oriented than it was when I was growing up. I mean, there's you see so many Orthodox people around and young Orthodox, and I kind of wonder where secular Jewish identity is going because in my family and most and most of my friends, I mean people tended to marry non-Jews. And so my cousins have grandchildren who were one-eighth Jewish. So what, what identity is that? I mean, do they maintain a Jewish identity? I mean, I know it's not all DNA, but you kind of have to wonder, like, what's left, you know? And if it seems like the non-religious Jews were very likely to <clears throat> marry outside of of not having a Jewish partner, you know, so 
Um, and I'm gay and I haven't had Jewish partners. So, I mean, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's a question I have, like, what is a modern secular Jewish identity? And why did my generation have the one that it had? And I think some of it is because uh, we were, you know, pretty close to post-war. I mean, we were born after the war, but, you know, I mean, I thought it was far away, but when I look back now, I say, well, I was born in 1953. I mean, it was just a few years, really. Um, And there was still that sort of um, sense of it could have been us and all of that going on. Um, But also, I think more importantly, we were all second generation immigrants. And, you know, so we were still very much connected to the prior country through grandparents, you know, they had accents, they had different foods, they spoke different languages, you know, it was very, it was very, uh, it was very salient, very tangible. And so that's not really there for this generation, whatever that, I mean by that, I guess 20 something or even into 30s. Um, But you know, maybe I think some of the interest in somebody like Celia Dropkin represents um, like a new secularism that uh, certainly there are still people who are trying to be in touch with a Jewish identity, whatever that means. And I, I still tend to think of it as Eastern European. I mean, I think it's a distinct sense of that of that world. And, you know, it can, it can include Germany, but, you know, European Jewry and what happened to it. And... Uh, you know, I think uh, the the Israeli community is quite different. Um, then you got have the Russian Jews who were more recent, and they seem pretty different. You know, so I don't really know exactly what to make of all of it. Um, I did go to Israel once. I was kind of curious, and um, I didn't feel connected to it. I just didn't. I I think I was expecting them to respond to me with more of a connection and when that didn't come i was just like well okay so i'm just i'm just visiting then you know i I guess i was sort of waiting for people oh you're jewish you're in israel and they were just like oh you're from america okay you know and that was that yeah um sort of oddly i mean i'm not a zionist i'm not happy with israel at all but i am a linguist and i Lately, I've started to feel attracted to Hebrew as a language. I like hearing it. I think it sounds kind of funny and and quirky, and it's something I wonder if I would actually want to go about studying. Um, when it comes to studying Yiddish, I really am ambivalent about it because I know that it's in there somewhere. I mean, even my speech style is somehow has a little bit of Yiddish in it, and I don't know why, but it's there. And so I think, well, if I studied Yiddish, then, you know, I would be getting in touch with some kind of genetic past, but I'm actually more interested in studying German as a language than I am in Yiddish. And I don't really want to be part of the Yiddishist community. I kind of look at that. It's too, a little too clannish for me. I feel like, even if it's secular, I feel like... uh, Maybe I said it before in another way. I don't really advocate for too much in-groupness. 